Okay, hi everyone, thanks for coming along. Um, my name is Mark Abador from Epic, uh, just over to your right, and um, just wanted to talk for half an hour about flexible learning platforms today and, and developing something that's unique to you rather than sort of a lot of vendors pushing off the shelf platforms that, that you have to sort of work within. Rather than that, it's what we're trying to do within Epic is, is look at your requirements and deliver something that's more fit for purpose exactly for you. So firstly, you know, we work with a lot of organizations at Epic and probably run about 70 to 80 learning platforms. The one thing that we, that we see all the time is every organization is unique. Um, and you know, that can be from internal factors such as sort of management styles and, and system requirements and stuff like that to external factors in the landscape you operate in with, if you're sort of in regulatory training, compliance, that kind of thing. Um, even political landscapes, a lot of things influencing system design. Um, when I was looking into the into sort of organization uniqueness, um, there was a good, good set of resources I came across on SlideShare, which is sort of the, the um, slide pack um, uh, sharing site, slideshare.net. And if you look on there under a tag culture codes, a lot of organizations have been, been sort of putting presentations together on what, why they think they're unique. And, um, and it's a good kind of background into into how everyone is different. So, you know, that uniqueness from your organization's point of view means you have unique learning platform needs and, and not everyone has the same requirements. Um, and, and the big thing for us is should you be expected to bottle that uniqueness into an off-the-shelf platform? Um, and we don't think that you should have to do that. Um, a lot of people get frustrated with their LMS or their learning platform procurement and you know, end up in this sort of situation. There's some research been done into this, eLearning Guild, which is slightly US-centric, but um, you know, they, they did a big study last year, of about a thousand or so respondents, I think, and a third of those respondents was dis dissatisfied, dissatisfied with their LMS. And you know, the, it, it's, it's a big investment doing an LMS. So it's, it's, it's a pretty horrifying stat, really. Another um, um, piece of research I came across, similar sort of audience number, but a bit more European focus, said 60% of their respondents plans to replace their LMS, which is just, you know, the amount of investment that, that you make in these kinds of platforms is, is pretty shocking statistics. So, so we think there's a better way. Um, and, and I'm going to talk you through a few, a few examples of things that we've done. Um, we use a few different platforms within Epic. We do a lot of work in Moodle, the open source learning platform. We do some sites in SharePoint, um, in Drupal. Um, so those are the sort of three three main platforms that, that we use, and all of them are you know have this this flexibility. They have a, a in Moodle's case, you know, it's a, a hugely complicated system. There's a lot of functionality in there, but that that complexity means that you know they can configure it in many many different ways. And and you know the same with SharePoint and Drupal. Um, you can make them do what you want them to do rather than be constrained by something that's a little bit less flexible. Um, in Moodle's case, you know that that's our sort of primary platform, really, and in in, in its case, you know the out of the box system um, just comes with a huge variety of features. You know, there's there's some in like sort of twenty or so different activity types, sort of different types of learning tools that that, that come within your sort of course um, course delivery part of it. Um, huge sort of site admin back end where you can set things up just how you need to. Lots of different plugins available on Moodle.org, you know, hundreds more plugins that you can download and just get the right thing, the right fit for yourself. So I'm going to talk you through a couple of examples, just three, um, three examples of Moodle sites that we've done before we look at a, a few other systems. First one we did was, um, that I want to talk about was EasyJet. So they have uh, had a sort of quite a unique set of requirements around compliance assessment. And, and this was a site that was aimed at, at, um, at cabin crew examinations, really. So Moodle comes with a, a really good um, activity type called the quiz module. And it's probably, probably one of the most feature-rich parts of the system. Moodle has, has been in development for, I don't know, going on 15 years, probably, and comes out of an education sector background. So, you know, the last five years, it's really broken out of that into corporates, which is, is really where we focus. But because of that education background, the assessment tools in it are really, really strong. And, and so EasyJet are really, you know, they've, they've got um, um, sort of offline packs that people have to do on their operating procedures and things like that. But they just use Moodle for the assessment capabilities and, and checking everyone's um, 
sort of doing that, get, answering everything correctly in to, to prove they're fit to fly, you know, the cabin crew. Um, not pilots, I should say, it's, it's, it's just this sort of ca- uh, customer facing cabin crew. Um, in their case, so we, we had to do quite a bit of, of rework of the quiz module. Um, they had some, some specific requirements around how often people need to retake that to prove they're, they're sort of flight worthy. And, and some, some, some ways questions, question feedback had to behave. Um, so we did a bit of customization to it and being an open source system, we got access to the code and, which allows us to do that. Um, so if, if someone wants something tweaked, something to work slightly differently, it's, it's quite straightforward for us to implement. It's also a responsive site, um, out of the box Moodle is, so, so it just sort of refactors down nicely for tablet and smartphone views as you can see there. So another one is um, is a sort of higher end of the of the scale is for cash converters who are um, you know high street retailer doing really really well recruiting an awful lot of people the last couple of years and uh, and you know a lot of those low end retailers are in similar situations um, and and wanted something quite bespoke on the look and feel front so they use Moodle pretty much as it comes in terms of features but wanted a very high end look and feel. And they had very specific requirements around, you know, wanted this sort of pencil sketch type backgrounds, these diagrams, um, handwriting in, in, instead of, you know, your normal fonts. And you know, it's not, not to everyone's liking, but it, it, it's, it kind of illustrates the, the, the levels that, that, that you can raise your, your LMS to visually. So what you see here is just your course menu. Um, and instead of just a list of courses, you know, they wanted this sort of post-it note style. Um, visuals and then you click through to one of from one of the courses um, into this one on security for example where you can launch e-learning modules so they got a lot of e-learning which we've built as well and that that launches those are just sort of fairly standard SCORM based e-learning but they do a lot of social stuff as well they've got this knowledge pool area um, people can go into and collaborate and the big users of the of the Moodle forum activity and and getting users to sort of share hints and tips and that kind of thing from from the from the shop floor and the last Moodle site I wanted to, to talk through was for UCL and, um, you know, global top 10 university, fantastic brands. And, and they already use Moodle for their student VLE. Um, and, and that's really using Moodle in its traditional um, uh, sort of sector. But they wanted, you know, they got the fantastic brands, great expertise, great lecturers and wanted to tap into that resource and, and sell online distance learning short courses. And... Um, so last year they engaged with us to build uh, a pilot site, which is which is this, which is why it says currently in beta testing, and and that's called UCL Extend. You can go there, you Google UCL Extend, and go go visit that. But um, the, the the key thing here that we did was built uh, an e-commerce front end for it, so they could sell these distance learning courses without having to to have any manual intervention of taking payments and enrolling people onto courses. And they, you know, this is a pilot, but they want to scale that up and and can't afford to be doing that kind of manual. Um, overhead. So in their case, we used a, a system called Course Merchant, who are at the show actually as well. I think it's um, stand 335 around the corner in the learning skills area. But they, they provide the, an e-commerce front end to Moodle that allows you to, um, to really set up your course catalog, your course descriptions. Um, this is what your sort of course description page looks like. And you just add that into your shopping cart and go through a sort of fairly standard website e-commerce kind of transaction. But the nice thing is at the end of that, um, as soon as that transaction is verified, you get your email with your login and your, your user um, credentials and can go, get straight into the course. So, and that's been a, a, you know, a real success for them. There's only about 10 or so courses in there at the moment, but they've just received, uh, that's gone well and they've just um, received investment from their board to, to start to scale that up. So, so we're hoping this will become a much more widely used site over the, over the coming year or two. And that's in a context of you know, MOOCs and all that kind of stuff, a huge drive to, to distance learning that a lot of universities are doing now. So that was a couple of Moodle sites, which hopefully gives you a bit of an overview of, of, of the, the variety, really, of look and feels and, and customizations that you can do. Um, it, being open source, it's, it's one of those things where someone comes to us with a set of requirements. Uh, anything's possible, really, up to a, depending on how much you want to spend. We, we do try and... Um, not to do too much sort of hacking away at core code. So we try and build things with plugins, which, which is, you know, Moodle's extensible nature is that you build plugins and just add them to it. Um, and Drupal and SharePoint are, are kind of similar models, really. Both have, have big communities of developers around them and this kind of plugin architecture. So you can, um, you can extend them as you see fit. So I'm going to show you a, a, a SharePoint site first that we built for Experian. Um, 
you know the the, the whole the whole thing with SharePoint is is that it's a big investment. You know, a lot of enterprise customers of ours are using it. So if you've made that huge investment in in a big system like this, then why commission a separate platform to run your learning on, um, which a lot of people do? But you can launch your your e-learning programs through SharePoint. Um, in experience case, they use this kind of molecule type um, navigation across other other parts of their sort of web portfolio. So we needed to reflect that. So it's just a sort of an animated um, menu that that's, that you go down into your your course list and eventually get into the into the actual course pages. And then once you're in those, you can use the sort of left nav there to to, to get around and and into your other courses. Um, and it's sort of fairly standard learning at that point. But the key thing is that's using the infrastructure they've already got. Um, there are two or three different SharePoint sites we built for them and a lot of learning, um, a lot of learning courses as well. Um, the last one I wanted to show you was uh, a Drupal site. In fact, it's, it's more of a collection of sites really um, for civil service learning. Um, so they, they run the generic training for the whole UK government for the whole civil service. Um, it's a huge site, it's just under half a million users in here, so this is you know, Moodle and Drupal really working at scale with a, with a cluster of servers sort of powering that. But um, So behind the scenes here we've got, this is the, the sort of home page as you log in, but you, you've got Moodle for online course delivery, you've got a Drupal site for coaching tools, so that allows civil servants to, to find a coach elsewhere in the organisation and get into a sort of mentoring type relationship. Um, and a, a course booking system for face-to-face -face classroom courses as well. So you've got these three separate systems um, all held together with this sort of Drupal front end, which is the piece that does all the user management as well and the content management. Um, so this, is, this has been a big, a big project. The, the key thing for, from their point of view though was that they've gone down the open source road. There's no license fees. So with Moodle and Drupal, you just download those products and, and, and configure them as you need and, and customize them if you wish. But um, you know, an, an organization like that, half a million users, could easily be, be asked to pay you know, five pound a head or four pound a head or something like that from a commercial vendor. They've just wiped those, those uh, subscription fees um, off the board, really. So, so they just pay for ongoing maintenance, obviously, and, and, and to keep it up to date. So this is, as, as you drill into that site, this is your kind of learning menu, really. So depending on what level you are within the civil service, you see different, uh, different menus of e-learning, face-to-face courses, and can just click into those and, uh, and access the learning opportunities. One of the, the big things we did, we, we inherited this site, so we didn't build this site from scratch. They built it internally about four or five years ago, and we're the second supplier to be maintaining it. So it's been handed over through a few different companies and an internal group. But... Um, um, but because it had evolved over time, it was a bit messy, needed a lot of housekeeping. So, so we've, we've upgraded the sort of back-end software, the Drupal and Moodle um, software that powers it all, and, and did a lot of user workshops, um, which is something I wanted to talk about in a little bit more depth, because a lot of the stuff we've been doing the last, in the last year with customers, people are much more focused on user-centered design in their learning platforms than they used to be, and a lot of LMSs that you see are quite clunky and, and boring to look at. Um, in civil service learning's case, we, we ran a lot of user workshops with different types of user groups and stakeholders, um, really analyzed what they needed from the system, what they liked about the current system, what they disliked, what they might have seen elsewhere that they want to want to have access to, um, and kind of re-architected the whole site and put in this kind of top-level primary navigation that you see there, which it didn't have. And you, you, you tend not to see that in learning learning management systems either very often, it's, but it's, it's given it a bit more of a web portal kind of interface, which learners are, are used to. So you know, if they're used to a certain sort of experience, why drive them down a, a, a sort of clunky LMS road that, that forces them to do some sort of fairly unnatural interactions sometimes. So th we, we just sort of lifted, did a lot of design work, lifted the look and feel of this. Um, so that, that's really all the sites that, that I wanted to talk you through. Um, we're very aware, obviously, every, everyone has very unique requirements and, uh, and we're just over here. We'd, love to talk to you about yours. So thank you very much.